I'm Richie Anderson, and I am often booked at the club when Joe Lysi bag of chips and the boiler are busy. For me, West Brom is the love affair that will never end. Over time, we make people feel more and more comfortable about being who they are um, in the place that they love to go. Hello, everybody. My name is Richie Anderson from BBC Radio 2. I am a massive West Bromwich Albion fan. I am Smethwick born and bred. I'm a season ticket holder in the Smethwick and I'm also the patron of the Proud Baggies Supporters Club. Now, bear with me if I look a bit haggard. I've not had a lot of sleep this week, mainly because of the build-up to the biggest match we've had in decades. Uh, and of course, I'm sure like yourself, celebrating very hard because we are in the Premier League, yes. Um, so it's great that we've gone up, but it's been such a strange time being an Albion fan. Not only have we had the stress of a promotion race, we've also not been able to get to the Hawthorns. We've had to all stay away. We've all had to watch it very differently. It's been very different for the players, very different for the manager. Uh, so for me, I've not actually seen fellow Albion fans, uh, lots of them anyway, for a while. So I thought what I would do is I want to get together some Albion fans and just find out how it's been for them really over the past couple of weeks, the past couple of months, what it's been like for them supporting Albion. Uh, and they are all from the Proud Baggies Supporters Club. So I want to tell you a bit about Proud Baggies and the incredible things that they've done for me uh, and also some of my fellow members. But before we get to that, uh, we've got a very special guest. Uh, it is the operations manager of West Bromwich Albion, Mark Miles, to stay zoomed in as I chat to him and say hello to Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi Richie, how you doing? I'm really good, thank you. I want to start by asking you, it's been a massive week for the club. Have you slept much? Did you go to the wild parties? Did you go all the way through? <laughs> Tell us about the promotion celebrations, Mark Miles. Oh, it was great. I mean, as you said, it's, football's been a little bit odd since, since March and obviously been playing behind closed doors. Uh, but we, it was a great night on Wednesday. Typical album we managed to put ourselves um, through the tensest evening as it was. What That last <laughs> minute and a half, our final whistle had gone. And we're then waiting to find out the result from Brentford and it comes through and it's just jubilation all the way through. So we had a good time with the, the team on the pitch and then uh, headed off to the, uh, the after celebration party. And I think I can join you by saying still trying to catch up on some sleep that was been going with it. What do you do? What do you do? Well, as, as Ops Director, I pick up everything that goes on sta stadium and club wise. So um, the stadium, the training grounds, the match day side. Um, the IT, the ticketing, the health and safety, safeguarding, all of that falls under my remit. But one of the key elements that, that I do is on the board representative that looks after equality and diversity um, within the club. And, and as West Bromwich Albion, we're really proud of, of our history of diversity and inclusion that we've had. And I think a lot of people go back to uh, the three degrees um, that we had back in the, the late 60s, 70s. And We've obviously built on that over time and we, as a club we welcome everybody and we want everybody to be here. As I say, unfortunately we can't get people in the stadium at the moment but when we, when we do, we're really proud that we've got groups like Proud Baggies and all the other sort of supporter groups that are there encouraging people um, to come into West Bromwich Alpen. We're a football club and we're open to everybody and we're proud of that. Um, I imagine though, society changes all the time so maybe the things that you could shout and do in a stadium 10-15 years ago you can't now because we always kind of progress, don't we, as a society? So for you, do you have to have that dialogue with groups like Proud Baggies? And I guess over the years, have you been educated on, on new things and thought, oh, you know, I don't, I don't know. How does that dialogue work between you and diverse supporters, really? Yeah, we have lots of dialogue with our different groups and Proud Baggies is just one of those. And people's, what people expect and people's behaviour has changed over the years. But what happened in the stadium many, many years ago is not acceptable now. And we work with the supporter groups, we work with the stewards, with the, the other, um, and the other sorts of the, the football authorities to, to make it an inclusive area. Unfortunately, football grounds are still a representative society and you do get one or two um, people that say things or do things which we wouldn't expect. But I think one of the things that has changed over time that I've seen massively is beforehand if somebody stepped out of line the automatic reaction was to, to ban somebody and say you're not allowed in the stadium for three months three games six months 12 months whatever it was but we've taken a slightly different stance on that now and that's very much come with working with with groups like proud baggies where it's not just about saying you're not allowed to do that you can't do that we're banning you for it we want an education change and you don't get anything by just saying you're not allowed in and we found 
that by through training and through dialogue that if people do step out of line what we tend to do now is invite them in and talk to people to find out what you did wrong why you did it wrong and to learn from it and that's one of the great things that we've got from proud baggies and the committee from proud i've worked with my match day team to meet people that have stepped out of line and talk to them and say what you said was unacceptable because of this and we're finding that is a far more positive way because it gets behavior change and, and i think ultimately that's what we want is that behavior change rubs off onto others that will make everywhere much more sort of equal and diverse i do stress it is a very very small number of people um but actually that and that can only come with dialogue and people being open uh, and productive from it what i love about albion is when i go to games i walk into the stadium and you you know you see the pictures up with the three degrees you know you see the the proud baggies flag uh, the, the Polish Baggies flag hanging over the Halfords Lane stand. The players have been incredible when they've worn the Proud Baggies t-shirts, the rainbow laces. Where do you think we're at uh, in, in terms of football now? For it, Is there still more to do in terms of making um, football stadiums as safe and inclusive as possible for LGBTQ uh, plus people? Or do you think we've reached that place now? Difficult. I think we would we would say that we're as inclusive and as welcoming for everybody. And I think the work that the different supporters groups say, particularly with Proud Baggies, uh, with their different groups, and obviously the 1968 club is a great example of actually trying to bring older people for the LGBTQ plus group into the stadium. I think there's still work to be done, and it's all that kind of education that goes with it. But I think certainly from our point of view, everybody's welcome. And as a club, what we try to do is promote those different user groups, as I say, the rainbow laces, as you've mentioned, um, the players will say, we've got the banners, we've got the big proud baggies banner at the back of the uh, the West End. So I think there's still work to be done. Um, but again, by working with groups, we do a lot of, uh, within the training. So again, proud baggies came and delivered a training session um, to the full-time staff and the permanent staff within the club. Uh, and it was a good open, and I think um, Neil who led that, it was a good frank open discussion. I and mean, people mm -hmm. took away learning, learning points and objectives of it. And we include that as part of the stewards as well. So the stewards get that. And I think what we find is by the more people understand, the more people are aware, then that just spreads out by sort of sort of osmosis into people and that acceptance is there. Uh, Mark Miles, the operations manager at West Bromwich Army, thank you so much. Thank you for speaking to us on the promotion week. And I'll we'll do this again next year when we've qualified for the champions and they will have a chat back then. I'll uh, take you Mark, up on that you. one. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Mark, thank you so much. And make You're sure welcome. you stick with us today because uh, we've got lots of interviews coming up. I'm going to speak to some of my friends uh, from the Proud Bag and Supporters Club. So if you're an Albion fan, you think, what's that all about? Why do we need that club? Uh, they're going to tell you why. And I think it's going to blow your socks off. I'm now going to speak to the founders and the committee and the hierarchy of Proud Baggies. Now, these are three people who I'm very inspired by because uh, they had a dream uh, and they've seen it through. And here we are. Uh, three years later, we were the first West Midlands club with an LGBTQ plus supporter club. We are ever growing. Um, and I love the fact that when you go to the RB now, people know us. You go in every stand and people know Proud Baggies. Our flag uh, flies very proudly in the Halfords Lane stand. Now, I mentioned at the start that I, I think Proud Baggies is absolutely incredible. And I think we sit here now, um, three or four years down the line, um, and it, it's such a big group and it's growing all the time. And you look at the, the chat that we've got and the presence that we've got on social media and the flag in the stadium uh, and the fact that, that, that we've seen players wearing the T-shirts that you're all wearing now when they're warming up, they wear rainbow laces. Uh, and people might be forgiven for thinking that, um, you know, this is something that's always been there and something that the club has always backed. Well, Piero, uh, this, this was your idea. You were the founder of this. So what was it that made you want to set up Proud Baggies? And how, how easy was it to do? Because I, I don't know, did you kind of know that Albion had quite a big LGBT plus uh, presence amongst its supporters? Did you do it through online? So how, how did you put it all together? So I came out when I was 19 to my family and friends. Um, but I, I spent six years in the closet in the sports industry, working in football and sports. And I kind of decided, when I did decide to come out in the sports industry, in, in the sports industry, that I wanted to give something back to sports and kind of I felt that there was probably there was probably more people out there that were kind of had these similar struggles in whether they're playing sport whether they're involved in sport whether they're supporting their football clubs um so yeah I just kind of started off with um with the idea of, of doing it I looked to 
at the time, Pride in Football and Football versus Homophobia, who were doing great work in football. There was around 20 other LGBT support groups ac across the country at the time. And I looked at West Bromwich Albion, knowing that we're a club with a proud history of diversity and inclusion. Um, and just thought we we need to do more. There's there wasn't any LGBTQ plus visibility at the club. Um, so I remember literally just signing up the, the Twitter page, trying to gauge interest and see, you know, how many other people like me that were that support the supported the Albion and wanted to to be part of this. And I remember the first two people I met was Richie yourself and um, a guy called David um, who came on board early on. And we met and we just kind of discussed, you know, what we'd want to achieve from the club and, you know, ways to move that forward. And um, so we, we started off having a few meetings with the club and they were, from the start, were really supportive and, you know, said literally what can we do to help, uh, what can we do to help you? So from the early days, the club were really supportive and, um, yes, yeah, it was definitely something that the club were really um, excited about and you know, something that we really wanted to push forward.